Hey, geometry students, here we go. The end of chapter 10. Getting close here. Um, 10.7 and 10.8. We're going to go ahead and combine these um, because I think they're pretty doable um, in tandem together. So let's talk about the volume of pyramids, cones, that's 10.7, and then spheres, um, and kind of are their own unique uh, volume and surface area situation. So just a couple of definitions or three def few definitions and then a couple of questions. Let's finish this off with volume of our remaining shapes, pyramids, cones, and spheres. Uh, so the first definition is, what about the volume of a pyramid and a cone? Um, we looked at in 10.6, we did prisms, which was simply uh, base times the height, um, because you found the area of the base, and then the height told you how many of those you had stacked on top of each other. Uh, you could see for cones and pyramids, that's not going to work, because uh, you have your base, but they're not uniform as you go up. They actually taper and get smaller and smaller. So it can't be as simple as base times height, but it's not much more difficult than that. We simply add this one third. So once you find your base and you multiply by the height as if this was a complete prism, the actual volume is simply a third of that total amount when we're dealing with a pyramid or a cone. Um, so all you have to really take into account is like in uh, 10.6, what kind of a base are you dealing with? Okay, if you have a square uh, like this, you're gonna just have one third, and then your base, in this case, would be side squared times the height. Or if you have a, a circular a cone, you're just gonna have one third times pi r squared times the height. Sometimes that will be written uh, simply as pi r squared h over three. You can see that's basically the same thing, dividing by three or multiplying by a third. Um, and then if you have something more complicated like a regular polygon over here, you're gonna have one third times one half AP H. Okay, with that one half AP being your uh, formula for the, the base of a regular polygon. And again, you could simplify that. You don't need to, but one sixth AP H. Okay, so just like usual, you're gonna one third base times height. It's not one half, so it's not like a, tri a triangle. It's one third. Um, and then the real trick is making sure you can easily find the area of your bases. And then again, multiply by the height and cut it in half. Also, I will point out that this is height here. Um, we're not dealing with slant height anymore. So this is height. We'd also think of it as altitude. And so we're, we're talking about from the middle down to the center of the base um, in each case. Okay, not, not the surface that we used for surface area, not the slant height. Okay, so that's, that's the pyramid, one third base times height. Then we have the volume of a sphere. Okay, so um, perfectly round shape in three dimensions. How do we find the area? It's kind of a riff off of two dimensional area. And so you can see it's four thirds pi r cubed. Okay, notice this little cube is a nice reminder that we're in three dimensions. So it's instead of pi r squared, we're in pi r cubed, um, but then you have this prefix of four thirds. So if we had our nice little sphere here, and I just imagine I've got myself a radius, say my radius is two, uh, we'll go ahead and say two feet or not. Um, we can just plug that in for our radius, for volume equals four thirds pi times two cubed, and we just solve from there. Two cubed is eight. So four thirds pi eight. Then uh, we multiply eight times four thirds. Four times eight is 32. Uh, 32 over three times pi or 32 pi over three was what that would simplify to. Um, and then if you want to actually you can leave it in terms of pi like that, or you can go ahead and make the calculations and round it to the nearest decimal. If we wanted to do that, we would get 32 times 3.14 divided by three, we get 33, approximately 33.5 feet. And again, we're in three dimensions, so that would be feet cubed in either case. Okay, so fairly, again, compared to surface area, very, you know, the trick is just making sure you memorize the formula. So we're just plugging them in how uh, we want to do it. Uh, four thirds pi r cubed for the volume. No, we actually, if you remember, we haven't talked about the surface area of a sphere. 
So how do we find the surface of a, area of a sphere? Luckily, it's a lot easier than the other shapes with their whole lateral area and their bases. Um, and so we have here uh, 4 times pi r squared. So again, it's, it's, it's like your um, standard area of a circle, but just now with the, the prefix 4. So 4 times pi r squared. So if we consider this to be the exact same circle we did a minute ago, we'll still say it has a radius of 2 feet. We can plug that in and say, okay, surface area equals 4 pi times 2 squared. And so that's just 4 pi times 4, which is simply 16 pi feet. Now, since it's surface area, it's not going to be feet cubed. It's going to be feet squared. All right. We can calculate that if we need to. And there's 10. 16 times 3.14. We get 50.2. So approximately 50. 0.2 feet. Oh, we can do both of these squared. Sometimes they'll ask you for both the answer in terms of pi and round it to the nearest tenth. Okay, so just formulas. Good chapter for flashcards to make sure you can get your formula straight. Pi r squared for surface area of a sphere, four thirds pi r cubed for the volume of the sphere, and then one third base times height for cones or pyramids. Just a couple questions now. Uh, number one, what is the difference between the volume formula for a prism and that of a cone or pyramid? Again, this is fairly simple and straightforward, but just to help you remember it, um, a prism has the two congruent bases. So it's congruent from top to bottom. So what you do is you just, the volume is simply base area times height. Because once you find this, that's your base area. Then you're going to have that same amount stacked on top for whatever the height happens to be. So just volume equals base, base times height. height. Cones and pyramids are close to being the same thing, except that they don't have, they only have the one base and then they taper towards the top. So you start with the same way. You're going to find that base area, whatever it happens to be. But then, and you're going to multiply by the height. So you have that height, but since it's not consistent, you're only going to have a third of that height. So we get this volume equals one third. Uh, let me go ahead and write it. Take that out of there. We'll say it this way. Volume equals one third base area times height. So same formula, but you got to divide by three or multiply by one third when you're dealing with a tapered cone or pyramid. And our second question uh, what is the difference between volume formula for a sphere and the surface area for a sphere? I'm just asking these questions to kind of encourage you to get mental tips in your mind for how to remember one from the other and not get them all jumbled, because I think that's the trickiest part of this chapter is not just having a jumble of, of the different formulas, because the actual calculations aren't that difficult. Okay, so the volume of the sphere is, again, the four-thirds pi r cubed, whereas the surface area is four pi r squared okay and so the biggest thing i would use i would point out to see the difference in this is again you have volume in three dimensions and you have surface area in two dimensions and you see that right there in the formulas where you have the volume formula has the cube because you're doing radius times radius times radius because it's um 3d um, and then the other one is just squared because you only have a flat surface area that's in two dimensions um, i'll leave it up to you how to Remember, four-thirds versus the four. But just remember, they're not exactly the same. Um, and we'll talk about in class maybe some other strategies for how to do that. All right. I'll see you in class. Bring some questions. Um, pretty simple notes for chapter seven, or lesson seven and eight. And then we'll be ready to review after this. All right. See you soon.